Hello, 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 my dear student. This week, we will be covering lesson 10.3, which is about chords. The essential question, how are chords related to their central angles and intercepted arcs? The vocabulary is chord. And throughout this lesson, you will be able to relate the length of a chord to its central angle and the arc it intercepts. So let's go through this lesson here. Central angle and chord. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. Why is RS equal or congruent to UT? Now, for vertical angles, these two angles are vertical angles, angle SQR and angle TQU. For radii, both of them intercept the same radii. So to conclude, we say that the triangles are congruent by SAS. Therefore, RS is congruent to U3 because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So, if two chords in a circle or in a congruent circle are congruent, then their central angles are congruent. And the converse of that theorem is also true. If two central angles are in a circle or uh, in congruent circles are congruent, then their chords are congruent. So, if MN is congruent to PQ, then the angle here, MTN, is congruent to angle QTP. This is one theorem, and it's converse. Now, the next theorem, if two arcs in a circle or incongruent circles are congruent, then their chords are congruent. The converse, if two chords in a circle or in a congruent circle are congruent, then their arcs are congruent. So here, if we know that MN is equal to PQ, then this arc is congruent to this arc and vice versa. Clear? So again, what is a chord? A chord is a line or a segment that connects two points on a circle. Can a diameter be a chord? Yes. The diameter is also a chord, but not every chord is a diameter. This point is a very important point. You have to keep it in your mind. Here we will relate arcs and chords. We will prove it using proving. We will do it in class. And then we have theorem 10.5. If chords are equal distance from the center of a circle or the centers of congruent circles, then they are congruent. You can see here, no matter how much I change the location, it's always the same, even if they overlap. So this distance here, I will make it bigger to see for you. Now, and if chords in a circle or in congruent circles are congruent, then they are equal distance from the center of the circle. It means here that they have equal distances to the circle, to the center of the circle. And as we are always used to do, what do we do usually? We have to practice many problems in order for us to understand more to focus and to stress on the point. Here, construct a regular hexagon inscribed in a circle. Inscribed means inside the circle. We'll do all the steps. As you can see, we have many steps here to be done. We'll go through them in our lesson. And then we have the summary or our conclusion. What do we conclude from this example? Now, if a diameter is perpendicular to the chord, then it, uh, then it bisects the chord. So the diameter here is perpendicular to the chord, then it bisects the chord. So EA is equal to EB, and the converse is always true.
so far. The perpendicular bisector of a chord contain the center of the circle common sense because we said in the previous one that it's the diameter and we all know that the diameter passes through the center of the circle. So I, uh, ha I hope you will understand this lesson as you have understood all the lessons before. Also, we have many problem solving to connect to real world scenarios. I hope you understand it truly. And if you have any question, don't hesitate to come and ask. Have a nice day, everybody.